So in just under a minute, we're gonna have one lossless file with all of our goals and anyone can easily take it and get all the big key moments that this team had without having to sift through all of my footage. What's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography. And we're gonna go film a hockey game today, actually, at the University of Toronto. And then I'm gonna take all that footage back here and we're gonna go over how I prepare footage quickly to get it to any parties who need it and to get it online and how I securely back up all my footage so that I can access it years from now when I want to. files what this whole video is basically about let's talk about it when i get home from a game like the one we just shot the first thing i do is back up all the raw footage to two places one it goes to my external ssd which i edit off all the time i have like a samsung t5 two terabyte ssd and then it also goes to the internal ssd of my mac studio that way i have two copies of it one i can take with me and one sits right here in my office and then today i'm also actually uploading to the cloud for the University of Toronto who I was filming for. So I'm uploading them my raw files as well. So that'll be like three backups, one in the cloud, one that I can take with me and one that stays here in the office. In my two terabyte SSD folder, I have a folder called videography work. So I've created a folder called U of T Varsity Blues. And then I wrote MHKY for men's hockey, January 18th versus York University. And then I have APP, which is where my eventual Adobe Premiere Pro project is going to be, where we're going to make all of our melts and get all of our footage organized. And then I have an export folder, which is where we're gonna put all of the footage melts that we create. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. And then I have video. So I have all the stuff for my A7 IV, which you can see right here. And then I have all of the proxies. Well, the only one proxy got created so far by my A7 IV. I'm going to create more proxies, maybe. I don't really need to create proxies, I guess. My computer is good enough, but. In a past computer, I would have created proxies. And then for my FX30, you can see that the footage is moving right now and it's already almost all there. But I have my FX30 files going here and those say PSFX in the file name, whereas the A74 files just say PS. And then the FX30 proxies are also in a folder within the FX30 folder called proxies. Now, all these proxies are finish with S03, they don't finish with underscore proxy. And that's gonna make it difficult for Premiere Pro to recognize these files and link them all automatically. So I'm gonna show you how I typically go through and batch change the name for all of these. And I do it using a program called Shutter Encoder. This isn't sponsored or anything. Shutter Encoder is a free program, but it's a great program for creating proxies and renaming files without having to deal with media encoders, slow startup times, and just like, annoying things about media encoder that I don't like. But you open Shutter Encoder, you grab all the files you want, you drag them in. And this is the same program I typically use to create my proxies. Then you select all of these files by clicking Command A, right click and click Rename. And then we can go replace S03, which is what all these files currently end in, with underscore proxy. And then you click Rename, and all these files all of a sudden end in underscore proxy, not S03 which is exactly what we want. Now there are a couple clips here on the FX30 that don't have proxies. And to show you how you would make proxies in Shutter Encoder and how I normally do, we're gonna make a couple proxies. So let's grab this one, PSFX1 and PSFX2. We'll drag them in here. And we're gonna go and select them both and choose function, Apple ProRes. And we're going to create proxies. So for image, let's go to 720p, 1280 by 720. We're going to have the ProRes be a proxy file, of course, and then we'll click Edit Media Content. And for Edit Media Content, we can go here to Display Timecode File Name Text, click Display a Text, and we'll write Proxy. And then we can get rid of the background, 
And this is going to let us know that the file that we're looking at is indeed a proxy file. So when you toggle proxies on in Premiere, now it's going to have the word proxy written underneath it if you make it in this program like this. Click apply. Then we can just go to colorimetry. And if you shot your footage in log, then you have to change this convert level thing to be 0 to 255 going to 16 to 235. I don't know why. I picked it up from the person who taught this to me. And I've just maintained that. And then you just change where you want to drop these files. So we can just drop them into our proxies bin here. We can do that by just literally dragging it in. Click open and then hit start function. And you can see the proxies being encoded here. And when both of them are done, it'll just make a little bit of a noise and then your proxies are done. The last thing that I want to show you is how I organize all of my footage and keep it super accessible so that I can get any shots that I need even years from now. So we're here in Adobe Premiere Pro. And the first thing we have to do, obviously, because this is a Blink project, is import our footage. So here is our footage. We're going to go to A7 IV and we'll grab everything except for the proxies folder that we created within this A7 IV folder. And we're gonna drag that in. Once all of our footage imports, we're gonna grab it all and drag it down to this little folder icon. And then we can just write A7 IV right there. And we'll drag that down to the same icon and write video. Then we can click on our video folder, click the new bin icon again, and write FX30. And then we can drag in all of our FX30 footage just by highlighting it all like this and dragging it on. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful so far, do me a favor and click the like button to show me. And if you think you have a friend who could also benefit from seeing this type of content, share it with them so that we can all become better videographers together. Now you can see here that I've already created a composition just by dragging a piece of footage down to this paper icon, just like that. It'll create a composition for you. But we don't want this composition to be named like this. We want, we want to actually name this composition footage call. And I don't think that people actually call their timeline where they grab all of their shots footage call but i do because i am calling upon footage from that timeline to be used in other timelines so if i'm calling upon footage then that's the footage call timeline i don't know i don't think that's like an industry thing i think that's like a me thing that i rationalize in my head and now i just do things that way but whatever so we're gonna go footage call underscore men's hockey underscore u of t versus york and for good measure we should probably grab the date in there so let's go 01 underscore 18 underscore 2023. Now we can hit the lambda key to go full screen and we're going to drag this outside of our subfolders there. And then we're going to make a new folder called sequences. And this is going to be an important folder for us as you will come to see. So on our footage call folder here, we're gonna drag all the A7 IV footage and all of the FX30 footage. You're probably wondering how I'm going to keep all of this organized. And I actually, in game, have been taking notes for every shot on each of my cameras and I've been separating them by period. Every time a new period starts, I note which clip was the last of that period. And then I just start taking notes for all the files in the next period. Now when I come here, I know what order I shot all my clips in even though I used two different cameras. Here you can see my shot list. So I have my A7 IV and then I have all the pregame shots, the shots from the first period, the shots from the second period, and the shots from the third period. I type these out pretty quickly when I'm in game so I don't have a note for every single shot and sometimes there's a lot of typos in these. But then you can see as I go down I also have all my notes from the FX30. So whatever notes I could like manage to get out basically while I was filming the game about each file, I've got out here and I know which clips are in period one. I know which clips are in period two and I know which clips are in period three. So let's label everything on the A7 for violet by just selecting it all. And I've actually set shortcuts for all of my color labels. So we'll go shift V and then here we'll go command shift I to set FX 30 as, I don't know, blue. I don't remember what the actual color is called in Premiere, but it's light blue, so whatever. We want clip number two to clip number 16 dragged onto this timeline. And that's the pregame stuff on the A7 IV. And then we want just clips number one and two to be dragged up as pregame stuff on the FX30. Now we're gonna do the same thing for periods one, period two, and period three. So period one on the A7 IV was clip 17 to clip 29. And then period one on the FX30 was just clip three. So let's go to the A7 IV. We'll grab everything 
from 17 to 29 inclusive and we'll drag those all on leaving a gap so we know where pregame ends and period one starts and then we're going to go into our fx30 bit and we'll just grab clip number three and drag it on and if you want you can even place markers here by clicking m then holding option and clicking and then dragging out and that'll give you this kind of like extended marker that you can write onto and then we can write pregame and then we can do the same thing here and just write p1 or first period or whatever you prefer i use the same like method of organization here for every sport that I do, this isn't like just a hockey thing. Like if I'm filming football, I'll do this the same way for quarters. If I'm filming basketball, it's the exact same. So I'm gonna finish up this process and then I'll check in with you after. All right, so you can see here, we've got our timeline totally built out now with pre-game stuff and every single period marked off. If there was post-game stuff, I would show it, but U of T actually ended up losing. So they just went back to the locker room right away and I didn't get a chance to film anything post-game. But we actually forgot to check our sequence settings after we dragged that clip on to create our sequence. So let me just go over our sequence settings now. Everything is actually right, 23.976 frames per second for a 1920 by 1080 sequence. But if you wanted to change your frame rate for some reason, and I'll show you a reason why you might want to change your frame rate in a bit, then this is where you do it and you wanna check this stuff beforehand. Also, do you remember those proxies we created earlier? I haven't done it on this system because my computer is just good enough to handle these files without proxies. But if you wanna enable those proxies, you can just go into the actual video clips that you've selected, pick whichever camera you want first, highlight it, right click, and then go to proxy, attach proxies, and then click attach in the pop-up menu. And it'll automatically bring you to that proxies folder that's within the subfolder where your video clips are. If you click on the corresponding proxy file to the whatever first file is selected and click OK, then everything will automatically link and you will get all your proxies loaded up automatically. And then if you ever want to enable your proxies, which is just the lower resolution files of what you shot so that it's easier for you to edit, you can click this icon right here. This is toggle proxies. If you don't have that, you can click on the plus button right here and then pick it and just drag it down. So we'll click toggle proxies and then all of a sudden this just moves a lot faster than if I were to scrub like this. Now the big question you all came for, how I keep all the best shots together? Well, I create footage melts actually. And for footage melt is basically just like when I take all of the best shots of a certain type and put them together and export them as one file. So let's take our sequence here that with all of our clips on it, we're gonna copy it and paste it. And then we can just call this goals, for example. We'll drop it in our footage melts folder under the sequences folder. And then we can just clear out all the clips from there because we're gonna add clips back in that pertain to this specific category of goals scored. So clear markers. And then we can also do one by just copying this goals timeline. That's called U of T game action. Drop that in there. We can do one specifically called scenics or we can do one called beauty and that can just be all the shots of the stadium that aren't actually of the players on the ice playing the game. So we'll do that. Drop that in as well. And let's open all of these up. Heck, if we want, instead of doing U of T game action, we can even specify this by period. So let's go U of T game action underscore P1. Then we can do another one for P2 and another for P3. So now we're going to take one of our timelines here that we've created that's gonna be one of our footage melts. We'll drag it down below the footage call timeline. It's gonna give us like this stacked timeline where we can see what's on the top here and we can have another timeline on the bottom. And this lets us drag clips from the top one down to the bottom one. So we're just going to open all the timelines that we wanna create footage melts of down on the bottom here. So our beauty, our goals, period one action, period two action, period three action. And we're going to start building out all these footage melts that are going to have all the best shots that we filmed today. And then we can export them as lossless files. Then you can easily upload that one MOV file to anyone else who just wants all the best stuff that you filmed without having to go through all of your useless footage and like spend hours figuring out what you shot on a particular day. Because if I want footage from this game tomorrow, I remember it and I can go into what I shot and find the clip that I need. But if I want footage from this game in five years, I don't want to have to go through a bunch of raw files. I want to grab the file that says goals and grab the goals that I need. 
we'll hit Command A to select everything, right click and scale to frame size because I know that we have some clips in here that are in HD and some clips here that are in 4K and we want everything to be the same size. Normally I'll just scrub through here and pull down clip by clip. So we'll actually do that first. So let's say we have this shot right here. I thought it'd be kind of fun to do like an old school style, like zoom me in type of look on the scoreboard. Does like I know, create that effect optically. I think that looks kind of fun. So we're just gonna take that. I kind of liked it. And we're gonna drop that under beauty. And then if we keep going, we have the pull out, which could also be kind of useful. So let's take that as well in case we ever want like a pull out shot from this game, put that under beauty as well. And we're just gonna keep skimming and finding what we want. That's kind of nice, that part right there where you can see the puck going past the logo on the ice. So let's take that part and kind of right there it ends. And we can drop this bit into our pregame melt, which we don't have yet. There you go. So we're going to build a pregame melt. So let's copy the goals melt and we'll call this pregame. There we go. But anyways, now that you kind of get the gist of that, let's go back to these notes that we took. And I'm going to control F on these notes and keyword goals or goal rather. And now I have every goal that I captured on video marked here. So I can go and pull them all into that goals timeline. So let's go to our A74 and grab clips 18, 19, 37, and 43. And it looks here like I actually missed the goal because I was filming a B-roll shot of the bench at the time. So I didn't get that, but I did get the reaction shot to the goal. So we're gonna grab that whole reaction shot so we just get the guys cheering in the corner and then skating by. You miss some shots sometimes, just the way it goes. And we're just gonna drop that onto our timeline here. And it's important to double check the frame rates of the clips that you're adding to this timeline. When I was adding clips to the timeline at the start, they were shot in S and Q mode, which means that they're in 23.976 frames per second in Premiere, and they're already slowed down in camera. But this clip, for example, if I right click and then click on properties, you can see that it's actually in 60 frames per second and we're dropping it onto a 24 frame per second timeline. So if I were to export this, it would export in 24 frames per second and I would lose that slow motion. So we have two options here. We can either click Command R and slow this down to 40% so that it also gets brought down to 24 frames per second, or we can leave this at 100% and then go to our sequence, change our sequence settings to 60 frames per second. And then when we export this video, it's gonna still be in 60 frames per second and we can choose to slow it down in whatever project we decide to bring this into next. So we're gonna do that option for this because I know that every single shot we have of a goal is filmed in slow motion. So let's go see where their next goal was at 37. And then they had a goal at 17 on the FX30. Here's a fun little shot we have just going through stuff. We have a fight happening right in front of us and then we have the goal, which is actually clip 38. This is what I meant when I said these notes can get a little bit messy sometimes. They don't always work out exactly the way that you would hope, but they give you a decent idea of where things possibly could be. So I think it's still worth it to take notes, even if sometimes you're in a rush and you do a little bit of a not so great job, which is why we're doing this. So here's the goal. You can see that I started filming right at the right time and you get the player passing the puck in and then the other guy putting it away you get the celebration shot right in front of us, and that's about it. We'll leave a bit of extra space here in case we need the audio for something later, and we'll drag that into our goals timeline. And then the last one was clip number 17 in period three. He picks up the puck, he brings it all the way forward, he dumps it in, and then they just pick it up, center it, and score. And then we can get a bit of the celebration, high-fiving guys on the bench, and that's the shot. So we'll take that goal and throw it in as well. And that is all the goals that were scored by U of T that night. So then we're going to come to the end of our timeline. We're gonna click O, and that's going to say that we're going to export all of this. But if there's any clips outside of it, like if we were to drag this in by accident over here, this wouldn't export. We're only exporting the stuff that's highlighted right here. So we'll click Command M to get to our export window. And then if you want, to make the file sizes small. You can export immediately as an H.264 and send this to someone and they can quickly download it and start editing with it. And then using the proxy method that we talked about, you can reconnect a full resolution file of these goals in later 
after they're actually able to properly download it since it is going to be a fairly big file. But I want this to be as lossless as possible. I wanna make sure that we can use this in full quality. So we're going to export this using our QuickTime preset and we'll just go through all the settings here. So Apple ProRes 422HQ is perfect. We're going to render at maximum depth. We'll change the depth to 16 BPC. Since we're not shooting 8-bit color, we're actually shooting 10-bit color, but we only have the option here for 8 or 16. We'll also pick Use Maximum Render Quality. And then we're going to come to our effects here, click on Lumetri Look slash LUT, and we're going to apply the QT Gamma Compensation LUT. Premiere does this weird thing where if you don't apply this QT Gamma Compensation LUT to your QuickTime exports, or even to my H.264 exports, I find, then the colors just don't look the same out of the editor as they did when I was coloring it in the editor. So like the way this log footage looks would be different technically if I didn't apply this LUT. It's available on Adobe's forum, so I'll link that in the description. You can go get this LUT. But if you ever have like issues with your footage not looking the same when you export it as it did when you, it was in your editor, this might be why. So anyways, we're gonna pick where you wanna export this to. And we have goals, date, sport, team versus team, save, and export. And now in just under a minute, we're gonna have one lossless file with all of our goals. We can upload that to Dropbox or Google Drive or wherever, and anyone can easily take it and get all the big key moments that this team had in their game today without having to sift through all of my footage. This is how I organize all of my stuff. I think it's the easiest way for me to work because it just allows me to find things quickly and spend less time looking through footage and more time actually editing and making cool projects. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis. And I'd love to have you around for that. If you have any questions about anything we talked about today, drop it in the comment section. I would love to help you out down there, whatever you might need help with. And if you liked the way that the footage in this video looked, then the LUTs and effects packs that I use for all of my content are available on my website, www.peterstorellis.com. There's some paid stuff and there are some freebies. So you can either support the channel, which I'd greatly appreciate, or you can just go get the effects that you want, which is also super cool. Anyways, that is going to be all for this video. So until next time, peace.